ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. Chilling new video from the gas lamp that appears to show a gunman in the middle of that shooting spree that left one person dead and four others injured. This video was taken from inside a business in the heart of downtown just 24 hours ago. Good evening. Thank you for joining us on this busy Friday night. I'm Steve Atkinson and our ABC 10 News reporter Anthony Pura is in the gas lamp speaking with that business owner who is open tonight 24 hours after the shooting. And that business owner says he's watched that security video more than once, still letting the events of Thursday night sink in. This video taken Thursday from inside Chocolat, a creamery business on 5th and Island Avenues. Outside the windows, the owner tells us you can see a group of people walk by and what appears to be the gunman then enter the frame. He appears to raise a gun and then walks away. Customers inside the creamery then begin to run to the back of the business. The man walking out the door to see what's happening, that's Michael Zora. His family owns the business. That was a stupid move from me. Everybody, they were running inside, hiding by the kitchen, hiding by the bathroom. I was the only one walking outside. He says he went out to check on who was hurt and alerted authorities which direction the gunman went. This is video of the chaos at the gas lamp quarter Thursday night around 1030. Police say the suspect, 32-year-old Travis Soraste, shot someone on 5th and J Street. The 28-year-old man shot was killed. The second shooting was on 5th and Island near Zora's business. Police say Soraste shot four people there. He then ran to 5th and G, where he was tased by police and arrested. On Friday, the gas lamp quarter began gearing up for the weekend, but Zora, whose family owns Chocolat and neighboring gas lamp pizza, says business was slow. We know what today is going to be slow. People are going to be scared to come to downtown. But some people were determined not to have fear hold them back. I think everything's in the back of your mind nowadays. I mean, you, you've got to worry about COVID. You've got to worry about you know, just danger in general. So, I mean, you can't, you can't stop life. Police said they would increase patrols following the shooting. Zora says it will ease some of the concerns. It's going to be a little bit more safety, but still, you don't know who's walking around. Anthony Pura, ABC 10 News. Now, here's what we know about the victims. A 28 year old man was working as a valet parker at the Pendry Hotel. He was shot and killed in what appears to be a totally unprovoked attack. Police say the suspect then walked north up Fifth Avenue towards Island and there he shot three men in their 20s. One is in serious condition. He then turned the gun on a 68 year old father who was just in there to watch his son perform downtown, shot that man in the stomach. That's when witnesses chased the suspect up Fifth Avenue, tackled him before officers got there and arrested him. Now, in the aftermath of yesterday's shooting, San Diego Police Chief David Nislight says there will be an increased police presence in downtown for the foreseeable future. Our ABC 10 News reporter Rena Nakano shows us how the Gaslamp Quarter Association also plans to increase security measures. Yesterday's incident was just one of many violent crimes that have happened in downtown just this year, but there are new safety measures in the works. ABC 10 News looked at our archives and found at least 10 violent incidents in the downtown area since the beginning of the year. Some include the January 31st shooting death of an 18 year old at the Days Inn on Ash Street. An officer involved shooting on February 25th at Horton Plaza. And on April 12th, a crosstown chase turned into a deadly SWAT standoff at San Diego High School. Gas Lamp Quarter Association staff hopes that these incidents don't deter people from visiting. The group is working with the city to build permanent bollards to protect curbside diners. And the association also plans to increase its private security presence and ask for more sworn officers to patrol the area. The more uh, patrols we can have would deter assailant or person who wants to start a fight or any of that. Um, I think just their presence alone would have people uh, think twice about doing something violent. Trimble says the association is now working with the DA's office to offer grief counseling and crisis management services to visitors as well as member businesses. You can find that information on our website, 10news.com. I'm Rena Nakano, ABC 10 News. 32 year old Travis Haraste is now under arrest and facing a murder and attempted murder charges. Now, the chief of police says he used a nine millimeter ghost gun. Now, that's a gun that has no traceable serial number. This afternoon, the chief said his officers are seeing a massive surge of these types of weapons on the streets. It's very concerning. We're seeing a lot of ghost guns. I think I reported not more than a month ago that about one in four of every gun that we're recovering right now is a ghost gun. 
Ghost guns have been gaining attention on the national level as well. Earlier this month, President Biden announced he is looking at ways to try and tighten restrictions. Turning now to big news involving coronavirus. Today, a CDC panel voted to lift the pause on the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, meaning it could be back at vaccination sites in just days. But the shots will carry a new warning about the risks of rare blood clots, particularly in women. Our ABC 10 News anchor Derek Stahl goes in depth on the factors the experts consider. During the nationwide pause on the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, the CDC uncovered a handful of new cases of people who developed rare blood clots combined with low platelet counts. But advisors to the CDC determined those cases do not warrant further delay of this life-saving shot. The science supports this news, and I know that this is welcome news for many, as many have wanted the Johnson & Johnson vaccine to fill an important need in vaccination efforts here and around the world. Regulators found nine new cases of these rare clots, bringing the total to 15. All 15 were women, primarily women in their 30s. Three died, seven remain hospitalized. Keep in mind, that's 15 people with serious clots out of nearly 8 million vaccinated. It is crystal clear, to me at least, that the risks of the vaccine are far less than the public health risks. Um, of, uh, of COVID running rampant through our communities. The CDC projects that over the next six months, resuming the J&J &J vaccine will prevent 1,400 deaths and 2,200 ICU admissions. But they also project about 26 more cases of these rare clots during the next 9.8 million doses, primarily in women under 50. There are no 100% safe therapies or vaccines. It's all, it always comes down to risks versus benefits. And even with some of the issues that have been raised, we've lost more than a half a million Americans uh, in the last year. Doctors point out a COVID infection causes blood clots in about 20% of patients. But these rare kinds of clots linked to the J&J &J vaccine have caused concern because they're similar to ones connected to the AstraZeneca vaccine. That vaccine uses the same technology, but it's not available here in the U.S. Many other countries have now added age restrictions on AstraZeneca, but the CDC experts decided not to do that with J&J. &J. But based on the comparative risk, uh, it's, it's much lower in J&J &J overall compared to what we know about AstraZeneca so far. Dr. Peter Chinhong of UC San Francisco says the nationwide pause was useful to fully investigate these clots and warn physicians. We've become better at recognizing these super rare events. And most importantly, we have a better paradigm for treating them. But other experts worry about lasting damage to public confidence. If the agency wanted to, to uh, warn doctors, I think there were better ways of doing it. The FDA is adding a new warning label to the J&J &J vaccine about the increased risk of these rare but serious clots, particularly in women under 50. Derek Stahl, ABC 10 News. And there are a few more steps before vaccine sites start using the J&J &J vaccine again, but it could start rolling out by this weekend. There have been zero cases of these rare clots linked to the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. Scripps is doubling the size of its vaccine superstation at the Del Mar Fairgrounds. Shots are now being given at two halls. The extra room at 5,000 shots went into arms yesterday and today. Typically, the side caps out at around 2,000. The last two days were a practice run, and it appears things went smoothly. We got in, ask a couple questions, take the cards, take the IDs, shots in the arm, and they're like, get out. And they had all these flag people just <laughs> waving you away. Go, go, go. And here we are. Moving fast, if the vaccine supply increases, Scripps could expand its hours from a half day to a full day and distribute up to 10,000 shots a day. The county announced 329 new cases of COVID today. Our test positivity rate was 2%. And for the third time this week, there were no new deaths reported. We now know the names of the two teenagers killed in that crash near SeaWorld Wednesday night. Today, the medical examiner identified the driver as 18-year-old Colton Sargent and his passenger as 18-year-old Ava Bender. Police say Sargent was speeding down SeaWorld Drive when he lost control of his Ford F-150. The truck crashed into a pole, then a street light. Crews had to use the jaws of life to rescue the teens, but both died right there at the scene. 
Caitlyn Jenner is running for governor of California. In a statement posted on Twitter, the 71 year old Republican announced that she has filed the paperwork to run for, Demo for uh, governor. Democratic Governor Gavin Newsom is facing a likely recall election this year. Once petition signatures are verified, of course, in a People magazine interview last year, Jenner described herself as economically conservative and socially progressive. Several other Republicans have also announced plans to run, including former San Diego Mayor Kevin Faulkner. In the meantime, Governor Newsom is banning new fracking permits in California starting in 2024. He's also asking state regulators to halt all oil extraction by 2045. Fracking is a process for extracting oil embedded in rock deep underground. Critics say it harms the environment and public health, but the oil industry slammed Newsom's move, saying it will cost thousands of jobs. Fracking, though, accounts for just 2% of oil production in California.